I'm Trevor James Bond, the interim head of Manuscripts, Archives, and Special Collections. I'm Robert McCoy, uh, assistant professor in the Department of History. We talked about this course for a good year before uh, it came to pass, and I think in our initial discussions, one of the things that Rob and I were intrigued about was really working together at another level of collaboration, bringing uh, public history methodologies together with um, some of what's been happening in terms of um, creating digital uh, collections from the library side. The other thing as well was uh, having the chance to have not only graduate students, but undergraduates and students from departments other than history participate in the project. One of the things that we tried to do at the start of the class is to have a number of experts from different fields, different disciplines came in. So we had uh, faculty from Comparative Ethnic Studies, a librarian from the University of Idaho. We met with a program officer from the National Endowment of the Humanities. And so I think we had a, a nice uh, visible way of, of having different disciplines, different experts come in to help provide the foundation of what we're going to do in the class. There's a number of fantastic collections in my department in manuscripts, archives, and special collections, but one of the, the greatest and probably the, the shining collection out of all of them are the papers and the photographs of Lucullus V. McCorder. And um, it's hard to overestimate McCorder's importance. Um, he became friends with um, warriors such as Yellow Wolf and other seminal figures such as Morning Dove. And McCorder not only had a passionate interest in Native American issues, but um, he conducted some of the earliest oral histories with um, key figures. And also he just kept everything. And through um, the work of President Holland in the 1940s, McCorder donated his papers, his books and his artifacts to Washington State University, where they've been curated um, since 1945. There have been a large number of works, both historical and literary, that have come out of, uh, out of the collection. Uh, Steve Evans, Voice of the Old Wolf, Cliff Trafser's uh, Renegade Tribe, along with Dick Sharman writing that as well. So it's been a, a, a treasure trove of information, uh, I think, as well, that most people from Plateau communities come and use the collection as well quite a bit for their own personal use, but also for tribal historic preservation offices, uh, historical works and studies that they're doing themselves. It's a marvelous collection that's been here for quite a while. And what's going to happen after the class is that um, as part of the class, students are researching photographs and applying nationally recognized best practices for describing them. And so what the public at large will see at the end of the process is not just a text list of the names of the photographs in the collection, that's what's available right now, but actually a digital collection where they can browse photos that have been described, they can do keyword searches, and the images in the collection will become much more visible so that any scholar anywhere in the world will be able to um, see the images for the first time. I'm Leanne Hall and I worked on photos for the Yakima group as part of the digital collection. Uh, my favorite picture that you'll be seeing is of William Charlie and his wife uh, Nia Tut and they're standing by the Bolin Memorial that was erected in 1855 to commemorate the death of A.J. Bolin, an Indian agent who was killed uh, at the hands of the Yakima Indians. Uh, William Charlie was an interpreter uh, for McCorder. Uh, the biggest challenge of working on this project has just been finding information about the photos and tracking down people who know the information about the photos, but that ultimately was uh, what I most enjoyed about working on the project was bringing in uh, experts on Plateau Indian tribes and getting a chance to pick their brains and find out more information about uh, Plateau Indians. I feel like working on this project will be uh, an, a nice CV builder for me in the future and digital archives are a wonderful thing for historians like myself to have access to. You can sit at your computer at home and find wonderful collections right online and it's really exciting to have a chance 
to work on one of these myself. The group that I'm working in was assigned Yellow Wolf as a topic for this project. Yellow Wolf was a um, was a Nez Perce individual that was present during the summer of 1877 and the Nez Perce War. The picture that I'd selected probably as my favorite out of the collection is a group photograph of Many Wounds, Yellow Wolf, L.V. McWhorter, and Yellow Wolf's son, Jasper. And this photograph was taken in 1909. It really speaks to the technology of the period this photograph does coming from 1909 because this photograph was produced from a glass plate negative. And if you look towards the lower portion of that photograph, there's a line there from that crack in the negative. So you can definitely see how this picture is a product of the time period. It's kind of cool also that many of these negatives are held in the McWhorter collection at Washington State University. The picture is also interesting in a historical sense in that it includes Yellow Wolf and many wounds who were present during the Nez Perce War. Um, also includes L.V. McWhorter, who really served as an advocate and a bridge culturally between the Nez Perce and the United States, and also Yellow Wolf's son Jasper, who represents the Nez Perce in the 20th century and the early 20th century. Some of the challenges that I faced with particular photos and with items in this collection were just not knowing where these items came from, knowing historical context, and I think what I enjoyed about that challenge was finding answers to those questions as well. In terms of why I'm in this class, uh, I am a PhD candidate in the public history program here at Washington State University and uh, also working as a ranger at the Nez Perce National Historical Park. This topic is of keen interest to me and I'm really glad to be working in this project altogether. My name is Lorelai Sterling and I'm a member of the Chiefs Group. My favorite picture that we've worked on in this group is a photo of Caesar Williams and his wife and three unidentified people. They're sitting in a bizarre flying machine overlooking a uh, cityscape of Portland. It's a studio shot and it's just so strange that these Native Americans are in a flying machine. Um, this project in general will help me with my career because I want to work in a university setting and digital archives are the future of our collections. I think one of my favorite pictures was the picture of Captain Rainey's Last Stand. Uh, which is a crop of boulders in the middle of nowhere, uh, essentially where Captain Rainey's scouting party was annihilated by the Nez Perce Indians. I chose this class because I work in manuscripts, archives, and special collections on digital archives. Uh, so it allowed me a kind of ground basis in what I do. The collection is significant to me, uh, I think, because it it shows us an alternative side of Native American history that you don't generally see um, while reading traditional American histories. I am Torsten Homburger. I am the second person in the Nez Pierce group, and my favorite picture is of John Minton. Um, his Native American name would be Swan Necklace, and I really, really, really like this image because it shows a very young man in a obviously you know staged studio photograph uh, with lots of um, Native America regalia. You can see that he's a warrior and he's a proud warrior and he's actually one of those guys that started the War of 1877. So we have lots of information that's written down. You know, many, many books have been written about this guy because obviously the war started because of him. What is important is that um, we have a picture in this collection, right, in the McWhorter collection. And that is why I like working with these pictures, because they have been published to a certain extent, but other things have not been really looked at, you know, cultural history, what, what I'm interested in. And that's why that's my favorite picture. I'm Clifford E. Traff, sir. And I was a professor here at Washington State University from 1977 to 1982. The McWhorter collection has a small guide, at least at the time had a small guide, but the guide is only the big picture of what is contained in this treasure trove of information. The McWhorter collection was pretty clear about people uh, being from different places. So although I was tracking the Palouses, I I've quickly learned from the McWhorter collection that the Palouses could be found on Colville, on Yakima, on Umatilla, on Nez Perce, on Coeur d'Alene, just all over. 
and that because there was no Palouse reservation, the people had been split and divided and then intermarried with people and they were all over the place. And McWhorter's collection is very helpful in, in following individual families. In doing Native American history uh, and following the McWhorter collection, it taught me more and more about the importance of family. This is a living collection, meaning that its use is, it makes the people that he dealt with and makes him come alive for me. They live within those of us who work in the McWhorter collection. Mm -hmm.